So this video is going to be about the molecular components of translation. So a codon is a group of three nucleotides, and so we know from the other video that um, this codon is what's going to be read on the mRNA molecule to figure out what amino acids to bring in. So we also have something called the anticodon, which is going to be the nucleotide triplet on the tRNA right here that's going to base pair with the codon, and it's this base pairing that's going to dictate what amino acid is going to be incorporated into that growing polypeptide chain. So we also have something called transfer RNA. So that's going to be this molecule right here. And so this functions as um, the translator, essentially, in translating the information that's held in the codons on the mRNA molecule into actual an amino acid sequence on a uh, polypeptide. So there's a total of 20 amino acids, but we have more than 20 kinds of tRNAs because if you remember from the codon chart um, that there's multiple codons that code for the same amino acid. And so we have to have tRNAs with anticodons that reflect those differences. And so that's why we're going to have more than 20 tRNAs, even though we only have 20 amino acids. So lastly, a ribosome is going to be the organelle where the polypeptide is actually synthesized. So moving on to aminoacyl tRNA synthetases. So this is going to be a group of 20 enzymes that are going to match a particular tRNA to the correct amino acid. And so the active site in this uh, enzyme, which is going to be, uh, the enzyme itself is this gray portion, are going to be highly specific for a particular combination of tRNA and amino acid. So looking at this process more closely, so in this example we're using tyrosine. So we'll have tyrosine and the tRNA that's specific for this tyrosine entering the active site of this aminoacyl tRNA synthetase right here. And so this synthetase is highly specific for only this combination of tRNA and amino acid. So once they're in this active site, we're going to hydrolyze ATP, and then the um, hydrolysis of that ATP is going to provide the energy to actually attach this amino acid to this tRNA, and now this loaded tRNA is going to exit the active site of aminoacyl tRNA synthetase, and then from here it will go on to the ribosome to add this amino acid to the polypeptide chain. So looking at our ribosome, so this is going to be where translation is really taking place. So we have our large subunit right here, and then our small subunit down here, and each of these subunits are made up of ribosomal RNA or rRNA as well as some proteins um, and they're going to be assembled in the nucleolus which is inside the nucleus. And so we have a couple different sites in the ribosome that are really important to how the ribosome actually functions. So first we have our A site which is the aminoacyl tRNA binding site and so this is where the new tRNA is going to come in and bring the next amino acid in the chain. So it'll go to this A site and from there, it'll move over to the P site, which is the peptidyl tRNA binding site, which is going to be the site that holds the growing polypeptide chain. And so while it's in the A site, we'll have um, a reaction taking place. It's going to attach this amino acid um, to the growing polypeptide chain, and then the ribosome will shift down. So now the uh, tRNA that was in the A site is now in the P site with the growing polypeptide chain attached to it. And lastly, we have the E site, which is the exit site. So when the ribosome moves down again, which is a process called translocation, the um, older tRNAs that have already added their amino acid to this polypeptide chain will enter the E site, where then they will exit from the ribosome to go out and be reloaded. So one important thing to note is that um, the only time where a tRNA would not go first to the A site and then to the P site is when we have the um, very first amino acid, which is going to be um, methionine, a special kind of methionine called informal methionine. And that tRNA will take it to the P site first instead of the A site because it's the very first um, amino acid being added. So there's nothing that it could attach to if it went to the A site first. So it goes to the P site first, and then the second one would come to the A site, and every subsequent tRNA would come to the A site first. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition.
Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu slash tutoring.